I just had the creepiest experience I've ever had on TikTok. Her creepy experience has reached 13 million people because Devin Kelly went to the search bar on TikTok, and I think this happens on all social media apps, by the way, and looked up what her Meyer Briggs personality type is, plus her outfit. Now, the thing is, the app knew she was INFJ before she started the search. So that's why she was blown away. How did TikTok know? We have this almost over 80,000 people who have liked the comment saying, how does TikTok even show me videos that I'm currently thinking about, but I never searched up or even spoken to anybody about. So I am a forensic medium, but I wanna be very specific. The things I'm about to share with you are not based on intuition, it's based on fact. Understand that everything is energy. Everything has an electromagnetic pulse. Your brain, your heart, your body. It is why our aura rings, our smart watches, whatever the devices that you use is able to monitor your metrics. And don't forget that all of these devices are actually wired to our environment. So understand that there is location sensing, proximity sensing. There's even device to device resonance. So once you put all of that together on an app, okay, wearables are able to tell you metrics about your body. Even the phone sensors are able to pick up this data from you. It picks up your heart rate variability. It's able to detect micro temperature shifts and other kinds of subtle EM, electromagnetic changes. That data could be interpreted into either stress or non-stress states. So there's a different metric when your body is asleep versus when you are hiking up a mountain. We could call this in the tech world, emotional state detection. So if the electromagnetic data from your body is showing higher or heightened engagement, such as your brain waves are shifted into beta and gamma, and there's an elevated heart rate, the app can sense this information and pivot into nudging you to relax or to get out of a certain level of exertion. Now, hold on, I'm going somewhere with this. Because all of that data, along with the environmental resonance tracking, gives a computer program a lot of data to make interpretations around. Which brings us into predictive thought patterning. So if all of your electromagnetic bio data connects to machine learning, the app can actually figure out your cognitive and emotional rhythm. And this is beyond using LLM or AI tools, okay? Because I know everybody's using AI as a therapist. So this is even outside of that layer in terms of how apps are able to know so much about you. Because predictive thought patterning is pattern forecasting. So your app might actually tell you that you will be very tired the next day because let's say you spent the entire day hiking a mountain and being in really high stress environments or you had been dealing with a very elevated heart rate, the app will tell you the next day that you need to take it slow. I, as an Aura Ring user for the last five years, will tell you that's why they have the readiness score. It's because all of your bioenergetic data is being funneled through machine learning to understand you. So for example, if you are someone that tends to be introverted and you go to a you go to Coachella or you go to a, a big event where there's lots of people, your body will respond to the stress. And that is how an app or machine learning can start to understand if you're introverted versus extroverted. Because for those extroverts that go to the next uh, Britney Spears concert <laughs> and you're like having the best time of your life, your body is pulsing with that vibe. But I just want you to understand how our world is changing. Changes in, in your HRV, that heart rate variability, 
during moral or emotional choices helps an app and not just an app, but it's just any machine, any processor helps you understand if you're somebody who tends to think or somebody that tends to feel. And finally, stress markers around ambiguity or just satisfaction, which is judging versus perceiving in Myers-Briggs is information that can also be gathered from you. So your energetic body and your behavior has actually been data that's been collected by all of the apps for over a decade before you started wearing your Fitbit. And it is also why the government just put $10 billion into Palantir because they understand that all of this information can be very helpful when it comes to, let's say, predictive policing. And if you are wondering about how our future could already be here today, let's go back to the movie Inception. This movie is about planting thoughts, navigating dreams, shaping reality through subconscious design. And I want you to understand scientists already used targeted memory reactivation known as TMR. It's where sounds and smells presented during sleep can reinforce certain memories. Hello. There are even REM sleep devices that help you lucid dream. I mean, as a hypnotherapist, we use the subconscious to help clear trauma responses, to help heal the body and release bad habits. And right now, and I want you to understand, there is a massive fight in the tech world for who will achieve an actual brain computer interface first. It is like China versus the US from what I understand right now. It's developing a plant that actually is put into the brain so you can directly connect to computers. I mean, the long-term vision of Neuralink as expressed by Elon Musk is to augment human communication, to enable telepathic-like um, communication. It is the merging of the computer, AI, with our physical, organic, biological being. It's known as singularity. But in 2025, it is to help understand patterns that show up in the collective. So it's not just you, but it's like, you know, the entire nation, communities of data. So if they can predict what we might do in the future, don't you think they might be planting thoughts into priming us on what we wanna purchase, what we wanna do, what like Meyer Briggs outfit you might wanna wear? Is that just really sophisticated marketing? Is it neuromarketing with your biometric data? I'm just asking these questions. Because they say in 50 years, we will be making a leap in neuroscience as well as quantum consciousness to actually change this entire world, including the way that you dream. I could only imagine. I mean, mm. I just want you to know that we are the guinea pigs for subconscious engineering. They don't know exactly what they're doing, but I promise you, they are shifting humanity. And personally, I would just like to have some say in it. So if your subconscious is really the blueprint of your reality, would you let a tech company redesign it? Or should that power actually stay in human hands?